What's up, guys? It is currently raining. Um, uh, we forgot to till up field 24. Uh, it's our last field to plant. We got everything planted. We got a lot of barley here planted. Um, uh, uh, field 1, field 3, field 26, field 27, field 28, uh, field 13, all barley. We went pretty heavy in barley this year. Uh, we went pretty heavy in corn. Hopefully we're right around one and a half, two million liters in corn. Um, and we're just uh, down here. Someone forgot to till up 24 when they're down here, so. Um, which is, I guess, pretty easy to do when you're trying to cover so much ground. But Anyways, uh, currently raining. Shouldn't be tilling when it's raining, but we have a great demand going on right now for corn. Planters rented. You can see uh, between these four fields is quite a bit of land. Uh, 25, 26, 27, so. Uh, 24, newly acquired field. Uh, it's looking pretty good right now. See all the uh, nutrients in there. A little bit of, uh, some of it doesn't have herbae in it, but. Swapped out some bridges, make a little bit more room. There's our planting rig. DB60 24 row 30 inch spacing with a refuge tank. I just want to till in all this residue and chop, chop straw before we start uh, doing planting here. Even though it's raining, but what can we do? I think we're going to invest in a bigger grain cart this season just uh, to make grain cart operation a little bit easier. 1050 is great, but uh, when you're running two combines, it really isn't um, ideal. So, Especially when your truck is, the trailer is set up to hold 1500 bushel. Uh, I'm just assuming we have a uh, overload permit for the road. Because if it uh, DAT would catch us, we'd be well over 80,000 pounds in that trailer. So I'm assuming we have like an overload permit. You know, otherwise you'd have to slap a whole another axle on the trailer, or have a pup trailer that you're taking along. So especially uh, in the spring, because it's technically spring right now when we're pretty much went the whole season without selling any grain and we're planting and doing spring tillage here and so especially in the spring after a really bad wet winter that's when roads really get destroyed from heavy heavy vehicles and
three two. Tillage, you know, I think everyone's kind of burnt out from tillage, but I mean, you have to do it. You know, that's the whole point of soil lawn is to manage your soil. You know, both spraying and tillage and lime and herbicides, so. We're at 48.8 hours on this on this rig. This rig did a lot of uh, planting. It's literally been raining for like three, four hours now, so we're getting a lot of moisture in the soil. I mean, we're at 100%, so never sprayed any lime on this field, so this field's a little bit, um, this field pretty much got neglected. Um, well, that looks like, no, that's just chop straw. At least it's not a very big field, it's one of our smaller fields. It's right up there with six and seven. It's just a little inconvenient when you forget about things and it's you know so far away from all of the implements and stuff. Nice thing about the rain is it kind of washes our equipment to a certain point. It doesn't completely clean it. It just uh, gets uh, some of the dirt off. Knocks it back like a stage or two or whatever it ends up being. 
because this thing was completely, complete dirt. We have 320 horse tractor and a uh, 450 horse tractor. That's the difference in speed right there. He's gonna go space himself out. Wise choice. So when we first started playing, we were plagued with no moisture, and now we're cur we're you know it's like gonna be Noah's Ark pretty soon so you know but when you have 25 days till your harvest it, uh, you know, it can never be short on moisture now the way it's set up is you can the maximum moisture you can get per grow station is 28 percent so that means you have to put down some kind of liquid nutrient or herbicide and then you have to spray again with water because water is its own kind of layer. So if you spray if you spray herbicide and spray MPK it will only go up 14%. If you spray you know herbicide or any kind of nutrient plus water it will go up 28. But that's all negated by uh, your tillage. So. You know, plowing and cultivating reduces moisture, so as as does um, sun. So the nice thing about rain is, for every hour of rain, of rain it increases 14 percent. So if you get you know three four hours of rain, all of a sudden you're you're up. You know, was that 54 percent? So you're you're up. You can really gain some ground if it rains regularly. You know. These one hour rains, they just don't cut it. You know, you pretty much need, you know, two, three, four hour rains. And, you know, if you get like a couple six hour rains or whatever it is, you, you know, you're pretty much set. You don't have to really do any kind of spraying. You don't have to really do much. Um, but, anyways, I really, every time I use this cultivator, I'm really happy with it. It just turned out really great. I was always a fan of the Tiger Mates. They just really, they look really cool. Like it's a cool design. I started making a new uh, disc, a 50 foot disc. And that's uh, that's a little bit more complicated just because of the angles and everything. All the angles of the frames are these odd, you know, 14, 20 degree, 22, 23 degree angles. So it's hard to model that. It's hard to model squared off on like a 20 degree, degree angled face so anyways I'm managing but we're definitely gonna need a 60 foot cultivator if we purchase a you know because if I build a disc it should be scripted as a plow because it's it's definitely not something you can really see it after you know it's not a spring I, I view the cultivator in this game as seed bed prep. You know, where like anything that's really like 
aggressive tillage to like break up residue to incorporate it to turn it over i view that as like a plow now i'd rather have like a third third terrain that was like like i don't know like you had cultivated but then you had like seed bed prep like i wish there was a third terrain so you could have like your chisel plows and your big plows you know, um, and then you could have your discs for a more aggressive vertical tillage and then you could have your field cultivators your fine you know your your seedbed prep uh, before planting i wish they would incorporate a third terrain layer that would give us a lot more options in terms of scripting and making it more realistic because really you know a a disc doesn't do the same job as a chisel plow you know it doesn't do it doesn't do the same uh, it's not built to do the same thing to alleviate compaction it doesn't do the same thing to get down there with that deep soil moisture and it allows the soil the moisture to get down in those deep layers you know 14 20 inches deep or even allow the crop root system to get down there if it's really a hard pan so or like a disc, a disc is just designed for say people that are running continuous high yielding corn to manage their residue, you know, or like um, people that are running barley or wheat stubble, they, you know, they, they cruise over that with a disc and then they're pretty much done and then they use their air, air drill to uh, drill in their seeds, but I think this new cattle and crops game will really make the Giants kind of um, look at the possibilities they can incorporate into the game because there's, there's definitely a room to improve in just about every aspect. Um, but I think that would be a great feature, just adding at least a, an additional terrain, field terrain layer. You know, uh, there's already technically there's three there's plowed cultivated and planted now if you added a fourth layer that would be great you know because when i when i'm over here and i'm dropping 60 plus hours on a a cultivation tool you know I want to have a reason to use it you know when you're investing this much time to model texture and script something and remodel retexture and rescript test you want it to have a point there has to be a purpose otherwise you know it's just kind of decoration it's just like well I have these two implements they're completely different in real life but in game they do the exact same thing so like if I were to use my 2720 here if I were to build a 2730 chisel plow and then I build a 50 foot disc and then I script them both as plows like you know when I get lazy or we get lazy or we get sick of tillage we're gonna go to the 50 foot disc to do our plowing you know but that's what kind of frustrates me is when you really want an implement, but there's no real reason to justify making it in game. It's it's a little frustrating. So it's the same concept of like the combines. I keep going back to that. There's no difference between a small combine and a big combine other than like tank capacity. Um, you know, they script the unload, unloading auger, all the same. They script the you know, your engine, but who really cares what your torque values are? It's not like it's a big deal. It's not really like the weight inside your bin will affect your performance. Like it did in 13. And it's not like the size of header you have on the front will affect your yield. It won't. Small combine has the same yield to throughput as a big combine, so... It's kind of silly, but what can you do?
But I really think if they were to like design this as, you know, kind of like other games that have real world economies, like you look at, whoa, kind of got sidetracked there. You know, other MMO style gameplays with like real world economies, that would be really cool. You could buy, sell grain, like if there was a dairy farmer, someone just wanted to farm dairy. You know, you could be someone that just bit, made hay. Someone that made grain and you could just sell it to the other players and you could buy their land. Or if someone went default, their land would be auctioned off. Or equipment could be bought and sold or traded. And, I don't know. But then, at the same time, you would have to standardize all the mods everyone was using. And that would be a great opportunity for... You know people that put in the time to model and stuff like that to actually like get it approved through giants and that way they could always have credits retained no one could really like modify it and no one could try to like take credit for it and you know even if they didn't make money from it at least all their hard work would be able to be enjoyed safely and properly by everyone else It's just a thought, but you know, right now it's okay. It's just kind of extremely basic. There's no real um, living economy. Like, uh, for example, if you take like Eve Online, everything you do impacts someone else's game. Everything you buy and sell impacts prices for other other players. You know, something like that dynamic would be. Great, I mean, but that would have to be an entire new game. They couldn't build it off of this. I'm not saying that would be something that someone, um, if they were to approach it in the, like that, they, they would definitely um, be the number one uh, company. It, it would, without question, be the top game, simulation game. I mean, you would have a great demand at a grain elevator and you'd have like 10 different people running to sell their grain. Like how cool would that be? You would have to wait in line. It would be very cool. You know, a great demand in this game right now, it only in, in, impacts you. But imagine if there's like, we're in this county or something like that. You know, there's like five other farmers farming, say for example on this map, or this is like a county. You know, it would be a really big map and stuff like that. But in this in this region, it would be like five other players or something like that. Five other farmers. And, you know, let's say they're all running corn. All of a sudden, uh, you get a great demand uh, at the elevator or the co-op for corn. All of a sudden, everybody's driving their trucks into the mill. And... But that would be great. But, I mean, the price wouldn't go down. It would be contracted in. Or maybe it's not contracted. You're just taking advantage of the great demand. But I think that would be a really cool feature. You would see other tractors and guys driving down the road. Um, you could like pay other players to, you know, if they have bigger equipment or they're looking for something to do. You know, you could pay, pay you know, players to help you do tillage, help harvest. You could just hire them to do their your trucking. You know, I think that like. That would be such a more desirable game. Because right now, Farming Simulator is all about, like, mods. And just, it's so basic, it's not even really fun. But if you were to have it where it's kind of... Everyone's involved, and it's more realistic like that. I think that would be, like, more people, including myself, would enjoy that more. And you know, there's games, I mean, look at Skyrim. Skyrim, they developed their gaming engine, so it just keeps rendering more and more scenery as you go. And like all these AI creatures, they, they have their own like little mindset. They do their own thing, you know? I think you could set that like the whole world map up like that, and you know, players just farm. It's, I hope one day someone develops a game like that. I don't really care who it is. I just really am hopeful for something like that is developed. Uh, 
cars. Right now it's pretty basic. I mean, multiplayer is okay. That's nice, that went quick. <laughs> the road to the fields right here and Jay's just like, screw it. So we are officially done with tillage and soon to be planting. And then we have a great demand for corn and then in two days great demand for soybeans. So. Uh, we spend some serious dough on equipment rentals, on seed, on herbicide, on lime. Let's see if I can bring it up. I mean, we're looking at 40,000, 39,000, 74,000. So, I mean, we've been spending some serious dough these last couple days on. This is like vehicle running costs, wage. I don't know what all that wage payment is. Someone was cheating on the server using Follow Me. Anyway, so this is going to be a nice field of barley. One and one and two and thirteen, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So I can't remember the last time I ever har harvested barley. I think the last time I harvested barley was maybe in 13. And I mean I did canola, I did, I did canola once in field 17 a couple months ago. Um, I really like the canola texture, so. Other than that, we pretty much just do beans and, and corn all the time. Anyways, it's nice that we get to retire our tillage rigs. Um, next season, might have to invest in our, our Kuhn Kraus and Great Plains. Because although I like my tiger mate, we've kind of outgrown. But then again, if we were to increase up to the 
50 foot cultivator and said, you know, that's 20 extra feet, 20 extra feet on the crumbler. Can our 450s handle that kind? I think it could. idea why they're parking in our yard. Blows my mind. Okay, that's done. So we have, have, So he doesn't want to do it. It's all good. Good to hear. 